All right, we're here at the TI booth and we're going to look at some uh, analog demonstrations. Hi, I'm Bill, um, and my project is the Analog Shield, which is a, an attempt to bring the electronics bench onto an Arduino shield. So we've got, um, we've got an example over here, and it is a uh, Arduino shield with a bipolar power supply that's plus minus 7.5 volts adjustable, and a four channel ADC and a four channel jack, good for 100 kilo samples, 16 bits. And we put together a bunch of demos to show off all the neat analog applications you can put together. Not all, just a few of the neat analog applications you can pull off. So we've got an FFT spectrum analyzer over here, which uh, shows off audio in ambient. You can see my voice bouncing around a little bit, up to 30 kilohertz. And it's using an Adafruit LCD, and our analog shield here is green prototype. But the new ones, the real ones, will be red. Um, and we've got, let's see, next up, next up, we've got a function generator. Can do sine wave, square wave, uh, triangle wave, sawtooth wave, and any other wave you program in, it's all open and, and adjustable. Uh, and you can see it on the screen here. And then I took that and we made a polyphonic music synthesizer. It plays MIDI files and four voices and puts them out, uh, puts them out over a pair of headphones. Um, and it's got seven minutes of Toccata and Fugue in D recorded on it, but you can convert any MIDI file you want. Um, and then up here, there's a real quick Lisa Ju uh, diagram example. Real quick, just shows two channels and shows like neat patterns on the scope. So um, those are the quick, quick first demos we have for today. The, uh, all these examples are up on my site, analogshield.com, as, uh, as tutorial. And they're also uh, in a zip file on the product page at Digilent, who is manufacturing the board for us. Uh, they're, uh, they're available. And so, uh, yeah, digitalinc.com slash analog shield, analog shield.com. Are you, now, uh, and, uh, now, now you guys are from Stanford, right? Is yeah. this part of coursework or is this like an extracurricular club activity? So it's, it's part of coursework. It's, uh, well, not, it's, I'm, I'm a PhD student. Okay. And it's part of my PhD thesis work is partly doing uh, educational electronics and bringing education to the masses, electronics to the masses. And we're really excited about that. My advisor is big into the Arduino community, he's super excited, and he wants to make the MOOC of the lab. That's the dream. We're going to see if we can get there. Um, so we've actually used this shield in a couple of classes with some real simple teaching demos to do, you know, teach students about sampling, quantization, those sure. kind of things. And it's gone over well. Uh, it's been a big success. So we're, we're going down the road. There are going to be more shields to follow. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you. It's wonderful to have you. I'm here with the guys from Texas Instruments. They're going to show off some of the digital offerings they've been working on, uh, maybe I should say playing with. <laughs> so I'm Trey German from Texas Instruments. Um, Hackaday, you may have seen this before. This was uh, version 1.0 of the quadcopter. Well, we're working on version 2.0, um, and we've made a lot of good progress with that. So let me show you that real quick. So uh, this is the new version of the board. Um, this contains all of the motor drive electronics. Um, and they're actually on the bottom. So we have four of our DRV8312 uh, motor drivers and four of our uh, InstaSpin Piccolo devices. So we're doing sensorless field-oriented control of our brushless DC motors. And what that gives us is about 10% lower power consumption. And with a quadcopter, what that means is longer flight time, which is a, a big care about uh, in the quadcopters today. Um, we also have a, a separate IMU, so I removed that from the board, so it could actually be used for other projects. So we've got an MP, uh, Invincent MPU 6000 and the Honeywell magnetometer part. We also have a CC4000 based uh, GPS um, and a barometer. So really, really great IMU and a, a really small form factor. Yeah, on these IMUs, um, are, I'm sure there's accelerometer and gyroscope. How many uh, degrees of, uh, of uh, uh, input are there? So uh, each of the sensors we have is a three-axis sensor. So we have a three-axis accelerometer, magnetometer, and uh, gyroscope. And then uh, the uh, barometer is actually a 24-bit device. So it's a very high resolution. I believe the sensitivity that uh, it has uh, is just a few centimeters. A re resolution with height. Yeah, really, really amazing part there. Um, so sadly, some of the parts didn't come in for the quadcopter. Um, there's a frame that this attaches to that all the motors attach to. So that's why it really doesn't look like a quadcopter right now. But we're going to have this thing flying at the New York Baker Fair and hopefully for sale shortly thereafter.